This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. We have the hardest working and the best living and the most wonderful people in the world living right here in the Upper Cumberland. But we would love to improve the quality of life. We, we want to reach out and, and make even better, better, better things happen here. And so one of the ways we can do this is through higher education. We have everything you need to get your first two years done and transfer seamlessly to any university and people do it all the time. It's taught me dedication. It's taught me that you can push through things. And it's taught me that you can start at the bottom, that you can rise to the top. Like you just have to put in the work and the effort and that's in anything in life. This program is a part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen. A public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. It's always been difficult in this region, partly because we're rural. Um, a lot of people have not gone on to college um, or post-secondary work, so their families aren't aware of, of how to go about applying for college or, or even to go to a technical school. We're in a rural area that has not traditionally been one that puts a huge emphasis on higher education, maybe even not even secondary education. As individuals walk into our school, they have different backgrounds, they have different stories to tell, different skills, but they come in and they're looking for something and they walk through our door and our goal is to take that individual as they are and where they are and to provide them with a skill and competencies that they need to be able to go into the workforce and to be successful, to give them a purpose for their life, to be able to provide for their families, to give them something to be proud of. And there's all different aspects about that. You can't say that we have any typical student because even among our students, they're all varied. Uh, we have non-traditional students, we have veterans, we have dual enrollment, we have uh, students who are on the Tennessee Transfer Pathway heading to a four-year degree. We have students who are pursuing a two-year degree that intend to go straight into the workforce. It wasn't until even through high school I was still having trouble telling people that I was going to TCAT and then straight into the workforce because they were like, so you're not going to college afterwards. If I'm going to work for the rest of my life, I want to choose college and I want to choose taking the next step in that education to make sure that what I'm doing is something that I really like and love and something that kind of helps me find my purpose in life and figure out where I'm supposed to be plugged in. But sometimes the challenge is just getting them over that fear of being able to do it and being able to say, I can and I can afford it and to know. And so we hope that through our counseling services and through the individuals that they come into contact with that we ease that fear and we show them that it is possible. We have people who struggle so mightily financially and economically um, with the costs of just life in addition to to school. Now there are a lot of uh, assistances out there, financial aid options that they have, but um, it's tough. It really is. But it's amazing how many people tough it out and they, and they get it done and, and get the two-year degree and then go on to tech. As a student walks the entire facility, they come in with a very unique background. All of them have different challenges and we'll use that word challenges. Sometimes it might be an academic challenge. Maybe they've been out of school for 30 years, maybe 20 years, and just that fear that they have inside of opening the door and walking in and not knowing how to fill out a FAFSA and knowing how to fill out an admissions record and what choice do I have and what career could I actually go into. I'm without a job, I have a family, I need a skill, but you know, what's it going to be like when I walk through? You know, we actually did a survey to find from the students themselves what their biggest challenges were. And we did not take into account filling out the uh, free application for federal student aid or the admissions process, those have their own sets of challenges. We just simply ask them, what are your challenges in completing your degree? What are your barriers that you see? Uh, many of our students work two and three jobs, some of them sleeping three hours a night. Um, some of them, there are financial barriers. 
Uh, others, they face barriers. Uh, we have helicopter parents who simply diminish their students' ability to be able to have confidence in themselves by always managing everything for them. It's important for a student to feel like that they're able to manage their degree. I always tell students, I already have a degree. I don't need yours. You need to be in charge of that. I think when kids come from high school, it is a big jump high school to college. It's completely different. I soared through high school, no issues, and I got to college and it was like, wow, I actually have to study. I actually have to do my homework and do work outside of class, do extra book problems, things like that. You don't really see it coming, but it is a whole different ball game. And especially if you come from a smaller school, maybe one or two hundred in your graduating class at Tennessee Tech, I mean, there's thousands and it's really hard to get to to get used to lecture hall style classes when you're used to 30 or 40 in a classroom. You walk in and your Gen Chem class has 250 and you don't have to go every day. So that's kind of a hard thing too because you're fit thinking, oh, I could just sleep in today. It's kind of cold out, don't really want to walk it. But you kind of have to go. And then you see the numbers kind of go from 250 to closer to 200. And you usually settle out about 150 in each class. But it's kind of hard to adjust where you don't have to be there and you have to choose to be there and choose to go and learn. So that's something that's a little hard coming from high school. I still always said I wanted to be a cosmetologist and everyone always said, so you're not going to college. That was, I mean, from even teachers and friends and family, that was the first thing. Or, so you're just going to do hair. I wasn't ever comfortable with it because it's one against a hundred people. Like I said, students and teachers and even family always said there. But it was when I started here, of course, that's what they want. They want you to get out there. They are so excited for you to, for that to become your career. And so now I hope I could get out there and be a role model to people who are just like me, not necessarily cosmetology, but anything, welding. I don't be ashamed to just come to TCAT. It is a college and you do make an awesome career out of anything that you do. Our average age of the student population at Vol State is 26 and a half. So that means we have a lot of students who are in their 30s. We have many who are traditional college age, 18 to 20. Um, we have many who are in their 40s and even older quite often, but very commonly in their 30s and most of them have kids. Most of them have jobs. And it is amazing to me what they're able to accomplish with all of those balls they have to juggle. Less than 20% of the people in our region have college degrees. Um, and that's no negative reflection on anybody. We have the hardest working and the best living and the most wonderful people in the world living right here in the Upper Cumberland. But we would love to improve the quality of life. We, we want to reach out and, and make even better, better, better things happen here. And so one of the ways we can do this is through higher education. We have everything you need to get your first two years done and transfer seamlessly to any university and people do it all the time. The Cookville Higher Education campus is made up of three partner schools, uh, Nashville State, Volunteer State, and Tennessee Tech University, with Tennessee Tech being the managing partner. All are equal partners, but TTU is the managing partner. Currently there's a number of options for post-secondary institution in the Upper Cumberland. There, of course, is Tennessee Tech University, our four-year university. You can go all the way up to a PhD. But we have other options as well. We have different community college campuses available in the region. There's a campus of Motlow State Community College. There's a campus of Nashville State Community College, as well as two campuses of Volunteer State Community College. Roan State Community College has a presence in the region. Uh, there's also what we call the Cookville Higher Education Campus where Nashville State and Ball State offer classes in Cookville. And then we have your Tennessee Colleges of Applied Technology, your TCATs. Those are what used to be your vocational technical schools and that allow for completion of certificates or diplomas in technical areas where students can come, go to school for about nine months, 12 months, get out of school and go immediately to work, earning great paychecks in this region. So there's a number of options for higher education currently in the Upper Cumberland. The Tennessee College of Applied Technology in Livingston is the premier provider of workforce development in the Upper Cumberland. And what that means is that we provide the technical training needed by the employers throughout our region. And all of our programs are developed and designed to meet the needs of our current employers as well as future employers. I don't think people who are going to school now realize just how lucky they are 
because you, when you and I went to school, uh, I started Tennessee Tech in 1976, you had universities and that was it. I mean, there were community colleges in the cities, but for these people around out here, and, and I have to say I really am proud of the state of Tennessee that they, that they value these people enough to put a college campus with a degree-granting center in Livingston, Tennessee. Our four-year institution of higher learning in the Upper Cumberland is Tennessee Tech University. Just celebrating, uh, just celebrating its 100th anniversary as a school located in Cookville, Tennessee, of course the hub of our Upper Cumberland region. Tennessee Tech has served, I guess over 80,000 people have graduated from Tennessee Tech over the course of the 100 years. And early on, as this region developed, it was very difficult for students to find the opportunities for higher education. And Tennessee Tech was one of the first options that they had. I chose Tennessee Tech because I'm from Cookville and they have really strong science departments and programs. They also have really good engineering programs. I didn't really know what I wanted to do at first. Um, I really like chemistry. I fell in love with that in high school thanks to my um, chemistry teacher. So that kind of pulled me towards tech and it's really affordable and I had scholarships for that and I wanted to stay in state to get the hope and things like that. So that's why I chose tech. I can tell you that uh, once again wherever I have traveled um, TTU has such a great reputation uh, and that comes from you don't uh, often get a, unless it's a bad one, you don't get a reputation, but TTU has a great reputation. Even when I was at Purdue, when I would talk about coming from Cookville, uh, many of the people would say to me, oh, that's where Tennessee Tech University is. Yeah, I've heard that's a great school. Tennessee Tech has continued to grow over the years. It currently has over 40 degree opportunities for students, ranging from majors in engineering and the sciences, to art and music and human ecology or agriculture and nursing and business administration and education. So many different programs that are offered here to the students in our region in the Upper Cumberland where they can go and get a four-year degree, a four-year bachelor's or stay and get a master's or even their PhD. Tennessee Tech is a great opportunity and has been so instrumental to the growth of this region. Um, the things I really like about Tennessee Tech are it's really it's big but it's also small. There's a lot to do, there's a lot of buildings, there's lots of options, there's always something going on but you still get that hometown feel, the community. You can know all the kids in your classes. It's not so huge that it feels like you're just one in a million. You kind of, you still get the sense of community with your professors and it's easy to get to know people to get plugged in, clubs, um, going to sporting events, you kind of see your usuals and things like that. And I really like that about Tennessee Tech. I also like um, all of the tutoring programs they have. Like, it's really easy to go to the library, which I also, it's like my favorite spot, to go to the library and there's a physics group going or there's um, a calculus group going and you can just jump in and it's nothing, it's not a big deal at all. So I like that about Tech. The best thing about the Cookville Higher Education Campus is they do have two community colleges that, ch that offer very different programs of study here. Uh, and so then we have TTU who will, the students once that they finish their associate's degree or once they follow their Tennessee transfer pathway, then they can automatically transfer into TTU here. So this is a unique situation. It's a much needed situation simply because we are so rural and students travel here. We are definitely a commuter co uh, college. Uh, we don't have any facilities for students to be able to stay on campus. So having this one-stop shop with so many different opportunities for uh, degrees is uh, unique in the whole state and is exciting for our students. Post-secondary education, education past high school, is becoming more and more important it, Within the next 20 years, over somewhere like 50 to 70 percent, it may be even a higher percentage, of people will need some training past high school in order to get a job. 50 to 70 percent of jobs will require that additional training. Now that could be a certificate field, um, it could be a degree field, it could be a two-year degree field, but some sort of additional training is going to be necessary to help people get the best jobs possible. We have looked into a variety of ways to be able to help students and we have limited resources and limited space so uh, one of the ways that we have helped students a tremendous amount is just through simply uh, advising. Um, we, we know studies show over and over and over again that 
retention is um, boosted through advising students. It's just simply, it sounds like it's just simply meeting with a faculty member and going over, oh, you've got to take these courses and you've got to do this and, and marking off a, a checklist, but really it's so much more than that. It's building that relationship, knowing that they have someone that they can approach if, if the workload just gets to be too much, if life's pressures gets to be too much. A more recent program, um, just started in the fall of 2015, is the Tennessee Promise. Now this is money where every high school graduate, if they go on to community college, community college upon graduation from high school, they will receive two free years of community college. They attend a community college in Tennessee, they get their first two years of that community college free if they go up on high school graduation. Tennessee Promise is part of the governor's initiative, Drive to 55 initiative, uh, where that we, uh, the state of Tennessee will have 55% of its residents have some type of degree or credential by the year 2025. And that has been, um, I have stated in previous conversations that that literally changed the landscape of education in the state of Tennessee and I like to think that here at the Cookville Higher Education Campus because we are part of the rural area and students can come here for a one-stop shop that we at the Cookville Higher Education Campus have added to that change in landscape by offering uh, courses here. The middle of my junior year is when my whole class was introduced to the Tennessee Promise and I can remember us, the students, along with our parents sat in the mini theater for a good hour, two hours of them just trying to explain that we could be getting a college for free and no one was grasping that. And it wasn't until I ever knew I was coming here until I fully understood it either. But um, if you don't get the Pell or the Hope Grant, the Tennessee Promise will cover whatever extra money you have to pay. And so it is getting college for free and it helps out and makes people chase their dreams that much harder. I really believe that it is creating a whole new uh, population of students and starting in the earliest years for families who may have never thought that their students, their kids could go to college for financial reasons, that it wouldn't be an option and, and kids who maybe got to be uh, in middle school and started thinking about a non-university track uh, from there on through high school because they just didn't think they would be able to go to college. The fact that the Tennessee Promise is just out there, I think it's creating a whole new option for so many people and it's, it's causing them to think more about college than many otherwise would. Our admissions clerk said to me that one mom just kept holding her hand with tears going down her face. And she kept saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. We would never have had this opportunity. And uh, Brittany told her, she said, I did not, I'm not responsible for Tennessee Promise. She said, no, but you've helped us, and this gives us hope for our daughter to have what we did not have. Our state, Tennessee, has done such a great job of providing post-secondary opportunities to our residents. For a number of years now, we've had the lottery scholarships. Those are officially called the HOPE scholarships that go to students right out of high school based on a GPA, their certain GPA and they maintain those scholarships throughout college. They can keep that all, of, well, four years. Uh, some students, it takes longer than that these days, but that's okay uh, as long as they get finished. But they can maintain that scholarship for four years as long as they keep that minimum GPA. And that money goes, again, to help defer their tuition and their fees. So I've received the HOPE scholarship, and it takes a huge chunk out of tuition, and it really helps me with affording college and the whole process. Um, you have to, you, to get it, you have to apply through FAFSA. And when you apply through FAFSA, you get all kinds of scholarships. But if you got certain grades in high schools and kept a certain GPA and ACT score, you receive the HOPE scholarship and it's guaranteed as long as you stay in state. And that's a huge help. And as long as you keep a certain GPA in college, you get to keep it. And the GPA is pretty fair. I mean, it's tough, but it's pretty fair to keep. So it's really just helpful. And I think a lot of kids at Tech actually do get it. So it really is helpful. And this has been phenomenal for people in this state. You can save so much money for these students, uh, their families. It gives opportunity for people who may not have the financial resources. I'm really proud of the fact that we 
uh, we uh, grant a lot of two-year degrees to people who go on and turn that into a four-year degree and very often into master's degrees and even PhDs. Each one of our instructors, they're industry people, they're people who have been in the field, they work, they know what it's like in the workforce. And so when they come in, they are instilling that knowledge, those work ethics, but they're also teaching the individual and I think that's so important it's an individual and they get to know that individual and they know what the challenge is maybe it's a fearful of taking a test on a computer and that instructor works to ease that fear to help them walk through that maybe it's a uh, low reading level and we can help them improve that maybe it's to get their GED and we can help them work on that or maybe it's just you know I can't get to school tomorrow so what resources are available and we can provide information on resources. It may not be something that we can actually provide, but as instructors and faculty and staff, we're here to meet the individual needs. I think we're creating a, diff a new population of students. We're making higher ed more accessible, and so we're pulling people in who might not have had that chance. We always try to look at the student as they're our customer. We want them to get the kind of service that they could expect anywhere if they went into a store anywhere. Actually even better than they get in stores. Um, we know that the processes that they have to navigate are very difficult. I have, I have so many students now who are uh, business owners, um, lawyers, uh, assistant district attorneys, um, nurses, doctors, um, who all started at Vol State and went through our two-year program and then transferred to Tech or some other university and got a four-year degree and then many times an advanced degree, a postgraduate degree. So um, it's really great to see that when that happens. She was a, definitely a non-traditional student. She, um, I saw her, I hadn't been here for just a few days, I met her coming out the hall, down the hallway on our new student orientation day and she was crying pretty hardly, hard. And um, I said to her, uh, what's wrong? How can I help you? And she couldn't even hardly tell me what was wrong for crying so hard. And she basically was just so stressed about coming onto campus that she couldn't remember how to log onto the computer, her password or anything. So she tells the story this way that I said, um, I called someone and said, this lady needs two things. She needs a tissue and she needs help getting onto the computer. And she did, obviously, and she has been such a tremendous success. I'm so proud of her. She um, applied for a national scholarship and beat out all the other community colleges to go to win the national scholarship to go to South Africa. And it has changed her life. She has now graduated from Nashville State and has moved on and is now a student at MTSU. And we keep in touch and she's sending me her, I told her I better get an invitation to her graduation because that's gonna be one of the proudest days of my life. Sorry. One of the best students I've ever had, a 4-0 student, it was, is a, a mother of two children. At the time, this was a few years ago, and I used to hold her up to my other students who were maybe slacking a little bit. And I'd say, you, you all have no excuse for not getting your work done or not doing the best because look here, um, this, this person had a job as a manager in a restaurant, a very busy restaurant. She had two kids, both under 12, and a husband. So she was working full time, raising a family, and married, and happily, and, uh, and taking a full college load and making 4-0. And, and every time she turned anything in, she was in my public speaking class, she would uh, absolutely blow everybody else away with her presentation. Always just uh, everything done just to the best of her ability. And she was good, very smart. So um, it, it, I really feel very fortunate to, to be able to have students like that be able to meet those people and uh, they're going to go out of there and, uh, and do big things. And so um, uh, that's just one example of, of success 
My guidance counselor, I can remember her sitting in front of my whole class and we was doing paperwork for colleges and she said out loud to my whole class, she said, I hate to tell you, but she said, in a year, and I was sitting front row, she said, in a year, Hannah Jolly's gonna be making a lot more money than I am. And it was just as easy as that. And people, I don't feel like they fully understand it until they witness it, until they see it. And I hope that I'm like that in our small town. It's taught me dedication. It's taught me that you can push through things. And it's taught me that you can start at the bottom, that you can rise to the top. Like you just have to put in the work and the effort. And that's in anything in life. That goes from your grades to your relationships to anything you choose to pursue. So I'm really grateful to have learned that lesson. It's amazing the hearts of the faculty and staff, but also the hearts of the students for each other and to know that we're here together to achieve one common goal and that's to make our lives better and to make our communities better. When we rise, we all rise together and that's, that's what this community is about. Cookville, Putnam County, had, even though again we are that rural area, we all have such a great working relationship. It, the people on the chamber, the people here, the people at TTU, everyone has the area's best interest in mind and, and it's amazing. Just look at what we're going to accomplish, that's all I've got to say. This program is a part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen. A public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.